Kimberly Strode and welcome to Straightforward. Today I am delighted to have Dr. Barry Pointer from the uh, Chattahoochee Judicial Circuit Accountability Courts, which includes Drug Court, Mental Health Court, and Veterans Court. Yes. And you are the leader of the Porch Project. Yes, ma'am. I'm the coordinator for this particular group. And so we're trying to bring Columbus hope, and that's what PORCH stands for, uh -huh. is providing overdose reversal to bring Columbus hope. Okay, so, see, that's a big one. I wasn't really sure in all of your marketing materials, um, of course, I am honored to serve on the advisory yes. uh, committee uh, for that uh, group. Say to the audience once again, we're bringing hope. So PORCH stands for what? providing overdose reversal, P-O-R, to bring Columbus hope. Okay, that's, I, you know, that is really, and I didn't realize that. Okay, so that's what you're doing. Your boots on the ground. Uh, you are out in the various counties in the metro area. Yes. And this is funded through a grant. Yes, through SAMHSA, which is the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services. And so we... And this is a government grant? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And it's with Columbus Consolidated Government. We, we partner together. Right. So SAMHSA is a, is it a federal state or yes. it's a, sta a federal grant? Yes. And so this program and this project has partnered with Columbus Consolidated Government. Right. However, since the Chattahoochee Judicial Circuit cover covers multiple counties, you can and take this program and share it with citizens in the Chattahoochee Valley. Yes, our, our grant was actually targeting the Metropolitan Statistical Columbus area. Okay. And that actually includes around eight counties. Right. So that includes six in Georgia and even Alabama. Okay. So Lee and Russell County. County, right across right the across. bridge. Okay. And if you actually look at the combined area, that's around 330,000 people there, right. but if you can include also going up to Auburn, Opelika, you have around 550,000. Right. Kind of corresponds to the TV market for, for you guys. I, right. I looked it up, you're like 126 or 127 out of 210. Right, and then we cover over 700,000 households okay. yes. in East Alabama and West Central Georgia. So where is your grant? You have around about eight in the statistical area. Yes. You know, I used to work for the Census Bureau. <laughs> Ours kind of go a little okay. bit further. Yes, ma'am. Right, and so that's what, and I'm glad you did your homework. See, that's what I like about smart and humble people. Uh, I was telling you before we started today, when I had the pleasure of meeting you at the last advisory board meeting, the way you came into the room spoke to me as an old social worker. That let me know that this is a mission and a calling for you. This is not something you're doing to work your resume. Right. And as I say to people, and I don't say it arrogantly, when your resume has already been worked, you don't have to walk into a room as a flamethrower trying to get attention. Right. As a matter of fact, you were so cool and you kind of sauntered in. <laughs> And you sat down and you said, I'm Barry. And you went on to talk. And then later, uh, when we were having refreshments, they said, oh, that's doctor. And I was like, what? So, I, and I was very impressed with that. And so that's why I wanted to have you come and visit. Because your style makes people feel like it's okay. You're approachable. And in order for this type of grant to work, because I work with federal grants in my other life as a social worker, people have to feel comfortable. And so when you're out in the community, faith-based schools, you were just sharing that you were in Marion County? Yes, I've been talking with the principal there at Marion County. I was in Buena Vista not too long ago. I had uh -huh. a good friend that's a teacher there. And I said, you know, you guys really need to be aware of what's going on in our communities. And so I said, I'm going to give you a Narcan vial to let you and just kind of showed it to him and, and, and those are free and those are free and it is it's easy to administer if anyone's ever administered flonase it's just about like that okay for and, the allergies yes okay so it's very easy now you can also have narcan or naloxone administered in other ways okay through needles <laughs> right but this is the easier way and so uh, for instance marion county i've talked to the principal and they are in the process of training all of their staff all of their faculty mm -hmm 
mm -hmm. in the use of this and they're, they have a certain teacher service day to get this done by in October. It's not been completed yet. Okay. And I can even supply them and those who do the training, if mm -hmm. they so desire, a one hour certificate which also says contact hour that they have done so. So that's a continuing education. Yes. Okay. And some groups really like that for their, right. own, their own needs. Mm -hmm. But we go to schools and one of the reasons we're going to schools is because of Wesley's law that came into effect on July the 1st. And this was a law that came about to get naloxone or Narcan is the brand name. Right. To get it into all of our governmental buildings in Georgia. Okay. And to, and to, the entire state? Yes. Okay. And it's, it's because we want to make sure this life-saving property is uh -huh. there. And it's free. And it's free through us. Now, it's not really free. I you know, know. Nothing in life is free. I know, like. but you all through this grant is what I'm saying. Through this grant. Because a lot of times people that need the resources, and especially in some of yes. our poor rural counties, yes. and here in uh, this area, we have some of the poorest counties in the nation right. in the 2nd Congressional District of Georgia. We're mostly an agrarian state. People, yes. A lot of folks don't know that. They know about Atlanta and Savannah and all of the big cities, but they don't really understand about the rest of the geography. So I say that to say through this grant, this yes. resource is free. So if we have friends, and I do know I have viewers in Talbot County, yes. Chattahoochee County, this is something that they can reach out yes. to the Porch Project and yourself and get this type of resource in their community under this grant for free. That's right. And we want to reach out more to, to just city governments and to schools. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned Chattahoochee. We were at their school back right. earlier this year. Uh -huh. So we're really trying. And one thing that we're doing with New Horizons Behavioral Health, mm -hmm. they have a new mobile unit that they just launched okay. going into eight counties. We are supplying the Narcan okay. for all of that. Because number one, we want to make sure people have hope and a second chance. Right. But we also want to get people into treatment. Yeah. And that's a part of this grant that is we're still working on is trying to strive to get people into and so we're really hopeful that that portion will be fulfilled. Fulfilled and that will help spread the word. Yes. Okay so what we're going to do now go to our first break to our sponsors and we'll be right back. We'll be right back after word from some of our sponsors. Straightforward is brought to you by State Senator Ed Harbison, serving the citizens of Georgia's 15th Senatorial District and on the front lines for veterans every day. Progressive Funeral Home, family owned and operated since 1952. The George Ford legacy of high standards continues today. In the compassionate and professional services provided, a touch of dignity for those who care. Progressive Funeral Home, 4235 St. Mary's Road, trusted by generations. Whole Patient Health Care, Dr. Jada Rhymes Bacote is board certified in family medicine. She believes the best patient care includes practical, individualized lifestyle changes. Located at 1338 13th Avenue, Columbus, 706-641-2080 or visit wholepatienthealthcare.com. And welcome back to Straightforward. I'm enjoying this very important visit with Dr. Barry Pointer from the Chattahoochee Valley Judicial Circuit Accountability Courts, which includes Drug Court, Mental Health Court, and Veterans Court. How did we get such a humble, talented, committed individual to come to Muscogee County well, you and do a thankless job. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how it is with grandchildren. Okay. And grandchildren brought us to Georgia. Oh, okay, all right. So, but our, our daughter teaches at Rainy McCullers. Oh, okay. And so we were brought here by that. We have a four-year-old and almost a two-year-old. And so we've been in Georgia about four years. Okay, the love of the grandparents. Yes. I, I do understand that. Okay. I'm a retired teacher. I taught for about 36 years. What did you teach? And I was in communication. How? I should have known. I that taught, so, I taught yes. Midwesterners how to speak Southern. <laughs> <laughs> With the accent, of course. <laughs> That's yes. it. The accent and sincerity is yes. what matters, I used to tell my students. Yes. So I'm not going to try to change accents. It's right. But but you speak with the accent of sincerity. Yeah, I like that. As, I'll steal that from you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I still feel like I'm an educator, and mm -hmm. I'm, we're very active in church. When we first moved here, I was in the cemetery funeral industry for three years. Really? Yes, and now I'm trying to keep people out of 
another cemetery. Cemetery, keep them alive, keep them well. alive. Yes, yes. We all got that appointment someday we, to make. Yeah, we do. But we we're going to delay it, particularly if we are administering the Narcan and if we have Narcan in our emergency kits. Okay. And that's one of the things I want to make sure that your viewers realize is mm -hmm. that I would I would have Narcan with my first aid kit. That's important. Yes. yes. And that way, and you also have an AED box, maybe right. your business, that have put also that in your AED box. So people will know where to find it yes. in case of an emergency. For sure. Right. And so we're going to various groups, ministries, churches, beyond just going to the judicial or the civic. Right. We're going to all groups. I was at a group recently, and I was talking about this, and a man came up to me, and he said privately, to me, he says, I have a, a struggle with with my son. Mm -hmm. And you know, that was on my heart because I yes. did not have any Narcan with me. Mm -hmm. But I made sure yesterday I met with him and I made sure that he had that and we went over how to use it. It's it's easy to know how to administer it. Okay. And so you have these little, which I told my friend, uh, which you will be connecting with some of them at another community uh, event. Uh, but. I told her it looks like a makeup bag. It's very convenient. It's not bulky. You know, a lot of times when we think of something that's first aid or whatever, it's it's this big container. Yes. You don't have any place to put it. But this, the the individual little ones that you give away, yes. it's you can have it in your car, in your, the, you know, the glove compartment. I mean, it's easy. Yes, though best not to store it there. In, right, but in I mean those. that's how small it is. <laughs> but it's that small. It's that small. Yes, and the reason I say it is sensitive to extreme heat and cold. Okay. And so what we have been doing particularly with our first responders many times is providing them holsters on their vest that says Narcan ah. so that they can bring it in and out and so they're not leaving it in. Now even if one leaves it in a hot glove box let's say still use it but mm -hmm. it's potency it's it, your efficacy may be diminished. Okay see I'm glad that I said that. Okay yes. of course I wouldn't carry it because I would be afraid if the police stopped me they would think I was <laughs> doing something criminal but I'm yeah. just saying that's useful information. Yes. So so even if we have it in our churches or in our schools, it needs to be in a cool place. Right. right. Not refrigerated, just a cool place. Cl climate control right. would be the best. Would right. be the best. But you know, it's like going to the doctor and they give you the best advice and you say, Well, Doc, what's your second best advice? <laughs> I don't want to give that up. <laughs> right, what's the other option? <laughs> and right. So but that would be the best option. For okay. Sure. All right. In your other life, uh, of course, we're gonna be working you more than probably what you'd like and uh, probably we'll get you a pair of roller skates for Christmas so you can just move all, all over. No, because this is very important yes. work. But you do, you are a member of a church on the south side of Columbus. Right. You work with mentoring at one of uh, the schools that uh, have children that yes. come from at risk environments. Right. And so that is a good starting place also. Right. We have a little Bible club that we meet at South Columbus Elementary School, and they're mm -hmm. just so delightful over there. That's right across the street really from where we go to church right and so we feel needed there right and we feel that the more I, I talk with different churches and groups and ministries there are so many caring individuals and they right. want to see people do right right but and they want to help people but we got to get them into treatment nobody wants to throw a resource right. at someone if they're not going to get into treatment exactly that's throwing good money after bad right right so we want to number one keep people alive longer so they can make that good choice mm -hmm. to get into treatment right and so with the um, accountability courts we have the veterans court yes. mental health court and the drug, drug court. court that is also a part of giving people hope right. and second chances that's right and as I tell people the biblical definition of hope it comes from the Greek word elpis and it means a confident expectation okay it's not a whimful wish all right it is a confident expectation a confident expectation yes. I like that I know I do and so when you're out speaking to people or you're working with families right. that's the kind of motivation and information that you share to help them to see all of us fall short 
but I believe in second chances. That's you right. know, some people get to a place in life where, uh, as uh, a minister would say, they got too old to do anything else, so all of a sudden they become holier than thou. Mm -hmm. And as a college student, I always tell people, we used to party, we drank TJ Swan. It was two types. It was $2.50 a bottle. One was Easy Days, and the other one was Mellow Nights. And it was 250, yeah. and so we would chip in if you can imagine that back in the yeah. 70s. Yeah. So don't try to pretend. Right. That's all I say. That you never did anything because now you so old, you too old to do anything. <laughs> right. and, and no, and then we're convicting people and judging people, yes. and then a lot of times that's why a lot of the things people do is hidden. Right. 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 And people don't often know about the option too of drug court uh -huh. and to be a and so rather that you have the ability to get into treatment and, and to to work through these problems rather than just be incarcerated. Right. And so I Which love is a it. revolving door. Yes. Right. I, well I you go to the jail, you're there, you dry out and you get out and you go back to your same playground as my friend right. the chaplain at uh, the shelter would say. You can't go back to your same playground if you want to be better. And you can't go back to the level that you were using before because that tolerance that you built up earlier, guess what, is now different if you've been straight for a while. Right. And so guess what, that's when a lot of people overdose. They go back to the same level of oh. what they were using before. Uh -huh. And so again, that, so we don't want to see people go back. You know, no. we want to see people continue going forward. Right. And, but I hear what you're saying. I went to LSU and we had oh. hurricanes, <laughs> we had hurricanes and we had hurricane parties. <laughs> Tell you what they also drank with the hurricane drinks right. at the hurricane parties, but you know, but life is too short, and we can mix and have lethal doses, right? To uh, toxic, you know, beverages, if you will, right? When we mix drugs, and you don't right. even know if you take something these days if it might be laced with fentanyl, right? So that's why I say again, have this in your emergency aid kit because right. you don't know this really reverses opioids okay. and synthetic opioids like fentanyl. Right. It doesn't help with cocaine or right. meth. Right. But how do you know that fentanyl or something wasn't mixed, mixed with, with that? With that. So right. when in doubt, use right. the Narcan. Narcan can save lives. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is go to our break to our sponsors and we'll be right back. We'll be right back after word from some of our sponsors. Columbus Pediatrics GA, working together to build lifelong relationships between our staff and patients by consistently providing compassion, excellence, and value with two locations. The Old Town Office at 3580 Massey Lane, Suite F, 706-596-8667. The Midtown Office, 1900 11th Avenue, Suite A, 706-323-3400, ColumbusPediatricsGA.com. Barbara's Cleaning Service, a five-star commercial service with satisfying customers in Georgia and South Carolina, built on the principle that every detail matters. Barbara's Cleaning Service, a new season building a family legacy. And welcome back to Straightforward. I'm enjoying this very important visit with Dr. Barry Pointer from the Porch Project. Everyone, you should pay close attention if you have civic organizations, schools, faith-based, professional organizations, all my social workers and my MSWs. This is something you all need to take advantage of, and I don't mean in a bad way, but in a good way, uh, because it's a federal grant, it has already been paid for, and I think it would really be useful in your daily work. So, uh, Dr. Poynier, I know that you are participating in some local upcoming events on this side of the river. Uh, you will be connecting with uh, some of my friends in the radio business, some of those legends, uh, and they are going to be with you out in the community in a very large group but you're also working on the other side of the river which is a part of the statistical area metropolitan area and that's an event that happens so many times a month and so when are you going to be speaking 
over on the Alabama side. Okay, I think probably the next event would be coming up in November, and this is with Unite the Valley. They meet every second Thursday, and so I'll be speaking there at noon. Okay. They usually have a meal together. Okay. And the, the pastor over there is a great guy, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure that they would welcome if they, they, it's beyond just clergy, also community involvement. And community leaders. Yes. And, yeah, and that's why yes. I was saying I have to shout out all of the MSWs, you know, yes. uh, in social work, because this is a part yes. of some of the the, the, they encounter families, and as you were saying, uh, the gentleman who was struggling with his son, a lot of families struggle in silence. Right. A lot of our, this is a big military town, a lot of our veterans suffer in silence. Yes. Uh, I have been a part of the homeless veteran stand downs uh, over the years, and we've had all of the VA from Central Alabama healthcare providers come on this show over the last 11 years people from Montgomery, Tuskegee, and Columbus Fort Benning. Yes. So we care about our soldiers. A lot of them, as you know, working with uh, Veterans Court, suffer from PTSD, so they are self-medicating. Right. And those are the co hard conversations sometimes we have to have with families. Yes. You know, so yeah, it might be a prescription drug, but are we using those drugs properly? I'm glad you mentioned that because we're working very steadily now with Fort Moore. Okay. And particularly Dr. Kirksey there. Okay. With the ASAP office, which is the Army Substance Abuse Program, and I'm providing Narcan to them. See, glad I brought that and up. Always looking out for our military. So I'm helping there with uh, October the 25th. That's also my mama's birthday, so I can remember that. Uh -huh. October the 25th, they have a prescription take back. Mm -hmm. And because this is the thing, many times we have prescription drugs in our cabinets and we think, well, we're going to save that, particularly that painkiller, because I right. might have this pain, you know, again, or right. some other pain. Well, guess what? Our grandkids get right. into the cabinet. Right. And then that medication is no longer some there. some other family member. Right. 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 And what we find is people shop doctors, because yes. one of my dear childhood friends just retired as a VA doctor. Yes. Uh, people shop doctors when they have the addictions right because they are seeking that next prescription the next prescription or they are trying to get medicines from other family members mm -hmm. and so we need to be aware of that because if you don't live in that world you are really naive and every time I come to the advisory board meeting I learn something new uh, the last meeting uh, that we held uh, just learning that some of the Crotum or whatever that is they sell at the service station, mm -hmm. that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, being old school, mm -hmm. you know, a senior citizen, I'm thinking if it's a bad thing, why are they allowed to sell it? And that's when I learned it's just below whatever the illegal amount well, it's you know. amazing what we do for that dollar. Right. And so the almighty dollar, I'm afraid, comes into play here. So, but again, you can have lethal cocktails from things that are actually legit. You know, right. that are not illegal substances, but if you combine it. My mother's had, for instance, cancer three times, and she has really? pain medications, you know, but y you have to be careful with the administering of those. Right. And even fentanyl itself, many many of these drugs, it, it came around around, um, around 1960 in the right. medical field more as anesthesia. Right. You know, many things uh, have good about them. Right. I tell you, any chemical can kill you. H2O as it's a chemical. Too much water can kill you. Can right? kill you. So right. that's the thing that we have to be aware of. Mm -hmm. You know. So even if it's legal, just the wrong combination of things, because we yes. keep hearing more and more about these accidental overdoses, right? Uh, where people are taking cold medicine and they took something else and took something else without reading the label, say every 12 hours. Yes. They didn't mean to. That's it. Let yeah. me I'll give you one bit of hope though since we talked about hope a little bit okay and that is one thing that we have seen is a plateau and overdose deaths this occurred last year it had been climbing 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 over a hundred thousand last year there was a plateau this year they're telling us a 10 percent decrease really having said that however I just okay. saw the stats for our viewing area here okay I just saw the stats we are st we plateaued we had the same number of deaths over those deaths that we had last year at this point mm -hmm. however 
ever, we have a 23% spike. We have 23% more people suspected of having overdosed. Ah. Now, we're saving them, I think, because of Narcan. Right. We're saving them because perhaps they are more knowledgeable about, about the, all the dangers associated right. with fentanyl particularly. But we're, we plateaued the deaths, but we still have a lot of drug use. So people are using, you're just keeping them alive. We're keeping them alive. Okay. So got to get them in treatment. I know. We, we, and we believe in <laughs> second chances. That's it. And once they successfully complete those three courts with you all, drug court, mental health court, and veterans court, yes. you also have a connection with someone that does second chance help them clean up things right. uh, on their records so they can go on and get a job and live a good productive life and just be great citizens. And on my staff we have a peer support specialist, mm -hmm. an individual who's gone through drug court herself. Mm -hmm. Tabitha is a great gal. Right. So I, I follow love her working, on social media. I love working with her mm -hmm. and she it has the empathy because she's gone through it. She's walked the walk. And she wants to help. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that we have found is that many times when Narcan is administered, let's say by first responders, maybe it's right. the police, maybe it's the fire, people are scared and right. they also have institutional, you know, right. representatives Senses. there and they're, right. they're hesitant to want to go into treatment. Right. So what we're trying to do is particularly work maybe more so with the hospitals. Okay. Because what, what you don't realize is, is that so let's say the Narcan is used, you brought mm -hmm. back two, mm -hmm. you may still die within an hour right. because that Narcan is only going to inhibit that, that opioid receptor right. for a short amount of time. Depending on the amount of drug in your system, system. you could still die. Right. So you need to go on and so to, to get the medical treatment. Sometimes right. people say, well, I'll come to, right. go home, and get away from the right. officer, get away from whatever. But get, but while there, you know, look how close you came. Right. And then maybe this is the time. Time to get that to help. get that help. Okay. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming. We will certainly have you back again. Stay in the good fight and just fight to the last because each one reach one. If we can just save one, then we've done what we're supposed to That's do. That's right. Thank you so much. This has been Straightforward. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Until next time, be blessed. What up, world? What's up, Columbus? Be sure to tune in every Sunday, Straightforward with Gloria Strode, right here on NBC 38. The Autism Hope Center. Diane Pope has dedicated the last three decades ensuring that families had support and resources for their loved ones on the autism spectrum. Join the Autism Hope Center for fellowship and resources located at 200 Hamilton Road, Suite B or call 706-604-6333. Muskogee County Coroner Buddy Bryan. Buddy has set high standards for himself and his staff, ensuring that every citizen is treated with dignity and respect, regardless of circumstances. Buddy cares about crime prevention and is always excited to speak with students and community organizations. Reach out to Buddy at 706-653-3260.